Hey guys, it's the Going to Turn again, and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, so please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the Air Foundation. I'm going to be showing you a demo scene and actually a demo project that Unity Technologies created for you for AR Foundation. And this is going to be called the AR Foundation Examples. I'm going to be focusing on the body tracking in 3D showing you how it's set up, how we can modify it, what kind of things we need to look for, and also what I'm gonna be doing on the next video as well after we get this video set up and you know how it works. So I jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have right now, which is the demo scene that I built by using the Air Foundation Samples Human Body Tracking 3D scene that Unity provides. And I'm also going to be providing the GitHub URL to this because Unity provides it via GitHub. But I want to show you the demo at first. So this is me, you know, in my office, just basically walking around, moving. And then I, I think it's, you know, the video tells you a story. The technology has just amazingly advanced. And the accuracy of this is, is incredible. So, yeah, I'm just moving around. And then the robot is basically mapped to the pose and the information comes from the basically from, from iOS and it gets sent to Unity, Unity maps it, and then we map those poses to, to the code in Unity. So I wanna show you some of the setup that they have in the scene. I, by no means I'm an expert in this subject. This is something that I'm, that I'm learning as well, specifically with the human body tracking. I am very familiar with other parts of AR Foundation, but human body tracking is something new to me. So what I'm gonna do for this video is just basically walk you through what they have and then we can take this information and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another video where I'm modifying the scene and we're gonna be creating from scratch but I'm gonna be using my own model instead of using the robot that they are providing. Okay, so just to kind of give you an overview of the scene, this is the human body tracking 3D. Once you clone it from GitHub, and I'm gonna show you where that is, if you go to github.com, Unity Technologies, AR Foundation Examples, clone the latest. And then once you clone it, you can open it up in Unity. There's a couple of things that I want to tell you before you do this. And these are really important because if you don't have this, the robot is not going to behave correctly because it didn't behave correctly for me. So there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. You need Unity 2018.2 or later. So right now I have the Unity that I'm running it's 2018.2.2F1. So that basically satisfies that requirement. And then the other things that I also have, of course, I have these components, but you don't have to worry about those because Unity put those in there, basically in the manifest. So, But if you're creating one from scratch, make sure that you look at those requirements before you are creating your own experience. So these are the requirements as far as like the plugins that you're gonna need in Unity. And this is a version of Unity that you need. And then the other things that are really important is you're gonna have to have Xcode 11 beta 7. Make sure that you have that because if you don't, it's not gonna work. I had beta 6 and it didn't work with beta 6. And I also didn't have 13.1 beta. I had 13 in my iOS iPhone device and that didn't work. So this is very critical, otherwise it's not gonna work. So once you follow the instructions and you know my recommendation, everything is gonna work. And if not, let me know in the comments because, you know, I, I will be more than happy to help you out. But anyhow, so now going back into Unity, if you go to the human body tracking, and you can find that by going, so once you open it up and you go into scenes, Unity has provided a lot of different examples for you here. They also have the, the human body tracking that I was just showing you. And if we go and find that, that one is gonna be under human segmentation. And they have a couple of examples in here. One is going to be the human segmentation and human body tracking 2D, which I, I gave you a video about. And that one I was able to do on my own. Uh, the 3D one I haven't done, so this is why I'm using this repo. And then they also have one for seg segmentation of images when they, where they are providing basically like two different layers, two different images that you can use to, to determine where you know a body is actually located. So I think it's called depth, uh, and, and then the other one is a stencil. So we'll look at those later. But for the one that we're doing right now, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I have. So this one has the directional light, just like every other 
scene that I've shown you, IR session, I already covered that in previous videos. If you haven't watched my previous videos, make sure that you do that. But for the most part, this is basically the same setup. You have an AR session and then also an AR session origin. This one right here is really important because we haven't have to deal with the basically the human body post 3D. So on the other videos, I had the AR session origin, but I didn't have an AR human body manager other than the, the one where I did a 2D, basically a 2D skeleton. So, but if you're using a 3D skeleton, you're gonna have to set, basically disable this one, make sure that your human body pose 3D estimation enable, is enabled, is set to true, and also make sure that your human body pose 3D scale estimation is set to true. And then everything else is, you know, this could be disabled and disabled. These are the two, basically the two uh, track, two segmentation images that Unity provides you with. One is gonna be the stencil mode, mode and the other one is gonna be the depth mode. For this video, you don't have to worry about it, but if you need to run that scene, which is this one right here, the human segmentation images, you're gonna to have to have that enabled, otherwise it's not gonna work. So for this video, these are the two checkboxes you have to have, and then you, of course, have to have that script assigned to this component, which is the AR Human Body Manager. Once you have that, then I think for the most part, it's just, you know, just having the human body tracking at it so unity provides you with two different scripts the ones that i've been using is this one the human body tracker i haven't enabled the test body test body anchor scale yet but you know if you want to try that and see how that works then you can look at it It basically just gives you like a scale value on on the on the gui on the actual canvas so if you want to see that and see the values that you're getting back then you can enable that for for now i'm not going to enable it i actually didn't do it on the test that i showed you in the beginning so and then the other part that is really important here is of course you have to add the air session origin which is which has the air human body manager which is the script that i just show you here that has to be associated with the it basically has a a variable that is exposed on this script where you have to associate the ar human body manager to it and then you're also going to need a skeleton prefab. So that prefab is right here, and I'm actually going to open it up so that you can see it. So Unity provides you with the basically the skeleton of the all the different bones and the spines and everything that is required for that gets sent from basically from iOS to Unity. And there's a series of joints that iOS is sending to us, and, and those joints are in the code, and it basically maps to what we have here. And that's why it applies the movement, it applies the rotation. So what I would do if I were you, I would look at how this is set up, look at the mesh, how it's set up, and then also look at the actual skeleton, the rig, and see how the naming convention looks like, and then try to map that to, you know, to a model that you're, that you're working on. And that's basically what I'm going to be doing on, on the one that I, that I have to work on. And for the next video, I'm going to be looking at how this is set up and then hopefully at some point in the future, we, we have a better tool to basically to build that for us or Unity does. So if for now, we'll just follow that example of the robot. So that's basically the skeleton prefab. You're going to you're going to have to map it. So let me show you the, the script that Unity provides. And so a couple of things in here, this is going to have an expose variable, which is going to be a skeleton prefab. So that's the, the robot that we have as a prefab in the project. So, so if you search here for robot, you're going to find that they have provided this controller control robot for you. So that's going to be that prefab. And then this is going to be the human body manager that we have assigned to the AR session origin. You just need to expose that. Then this is just a public variable for the skeleton prefab. It looks like nothing is using it. So at some point they probably were using it or maybe we're using it in this script. Yep, and that's why it's actually there. It shouldn't be public because nothing else is using it, but that's how Unity did it, so that's okay. And then the other thing that they have here is they have a skeleton tracker, and they are basically tracking, it's a dictionary with a trackable ID and also a ball controller. So the other thing that I, that I also saw is like when, when this component gets enabled, there's a human body's change. So this is an event that is going to be executed anytime you do a movement on your body or or something changes in the rotation of your, you know, your hand or, or the movement of your hand, that's when this is going to get executed. And then this is basically the method that does most of the work. 
this is the one that is basically sending the information back to the the actual component, the skeleton tracker, to tell it to you know apply a pose. And it's actually the bone controller that it's actually applying a pose. So so what we do here, we get a we get a bone controller, and this is just a basically a, a reference. It hasn't been set yet. And then we look at the arguments that get passed into that event. Then if you know the human body looks like it's looping through anything that was added. And then we we look at the skeleton tracker and what, what they're doing right now is they're just caching the basically the trackable IDs. So if we already track, you know, a part of the body and it's already in the dictionary, there's really not a reason to, you know, to add it to a dictionary again. So this is how it works. It just basically uses the ID as a key and then the bone that was detected before as a, as a value in that dictionary. And then it just says right here, adding a new skeleton. And then we get basically a new instance of the skeleton prefab at that transform. Then we get the bone controller from the new skeleton that we just added. We add it to a dictionary, so it's already been cached. Then we initialize the skeleton join. So I want to show you, I want to show you that before we before we keep going. So if we look at the initialization of the of the skeleton joins, it basically has a queue of all the different nodes. And if we look at the actual process join, let me show you how that works. And if you look at the very top of the script, which is on the bone controller, Unity has what's called join index indexes, and it has basically a list of all the enums and what the values are. So when I told you about the names on the robot, this is really important here because this is what's going to be mapping to, to the joins on the model that you create. So I would recommend that you follow, you know, that naming convention. And if you follow the naming convention, I'm hoping that it's going to work. And I'm going to be doing a lot of tests to make sure that, that that's true. But for the most part, this is a component that they provide. And it's part of the, you know, the actual scripts in the in this repo. So you're more than welcome to look at that. So we basically initialize the skeleton joints and then we apply uh, a body pose. And, and this apply is the one that is actually, you know, setting the joint location and basically the position and rotation so whenever i lift my hand when you saw that i was doing that on the demo and i was moving so any movement so my hand here it's basically you know idle and, and they're basically down so the location and the rotation it's all you know getting getting is getting that information from the joint and then we're basically changing the local position on the bone so a lot of this is something that they provide so I, again, I would recommend that you look at their setup and then try to follow that and then customize it as you need to. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. I'm going to be experimenting more with the body tracking in 3D in the next few videos. So for now, this is kind of a, you know, a quick overview of what Unity provides. But like I said, in the next couple of videos, we're going to be getting more in depth into it. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. Alright guys, thank you much for watching this video, I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.